they get to launch and they have time to ramp up. So they'll have maybe a year to two years to even get to that, you know, that huge user base. And during that time, they're able to set up their backend systems and all that. So we're being tested in a lot of different ways. And I think with the launch of Android, it sh- we our, our servers, nothing ever went down. So we have evolved. Nothing went down for Android. Our, our servers scaled up perfectly. Everything was handled beautifully. And I foresee the same uh, process being uh, handled, uh, handled the same, the same way, way, basically, with, with iOS. iOS. So, knock on wood. Like said, knock on wood. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, no, no, so uh, it's it's been really exciting, and I, I love watching the Slack, just the amount of communication going back and forth between the, the, the different teams and everything that are all part of the SafeMoon wallet team. You know, you've got sub teams within that team that each one's working on a different feature set or one's working on the back end, front end, UI, everything. Um, so it's, it's great to see all the communication between, you know, all the, uh, all the team members. Um, let's open up to uh, some, uh, some community dialogue, you know, uh, get a little bit of a discussion going. So um, host, uh, go ahead and grab a few people um, to speak. Give us, you know, a little bit while we, we get those people up. Um, while we're waiting, uh, so one of the items that we uh, we kind of talked about was uh, the the UI overhaul as well. You know, um, that's going to take a, a not a little bit of time, but a, you know, a little bit of time, and that's something that we're working towards right now. I mean, I saw the uh, the, uh, the 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 schematics that you sent over, the, the wireframes and everything. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, people, people are going to be in for a, a nice treat once we do a, once we do a UI overhaul. Um, that's, that's something we haven't even talked about yet. yet. Uh, but, but like, like I, said, I said, you know, like we always say, we hear you. You know, we hear you yep. guys. So, so don't, worry. don't worry. That UI, UI overhaul is in the works. works. Um, it's already it's actually been started. started. So um, yeah, yeah. like I said, we're, we're always trying to stay ahead of the game. And you know, as all of these features come out then we'll just be transferring those features into a new UI um, as we grow. So, Yep. All right. Looks like we've got a few speakers up on deck. All right, Evan. How are you doing? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Evan? Great. I just want to tell you guys how proud we are of uh, basically how much we've been muddling through the FUD the last few weeks and seeming to be on the other side of it. So my question for you guys is how are things looking on the exchange side? So, okay, uh, exchange side, for us, to be, to be honest, and Ryan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's not necessarily the, uh, the building out of it. It's, uh, for me, it's more, I'm more focused on the regulatory framework and what we can do um, to, to be in compliance. You know, crypto is definitely, uh, you know, a wild west, just like the internet was, you know, in the early days. And it's making sure we're planning for the future. And so I've been focused on the regulatory side of things. You know, whether it be a, a money services business license, um, you know, uh, yeah, anyway, we, uh, we, we work with a lot of lawyers uh, and a lot of uh, regulators, and we're trying to work out the best way to implement the specifically the exchange portion where we can add some pretty cool feature sets in there um, and still be in compliance. And Ryan, from the technical side, you know. From the technical side, realistically, um, we're going to have we're going to need some time to really build out a secure exchange. Uh, we, want uh, we want to do it right. right. We, we want to make sure, just like the wallet, the wallet. we want to do everything right. right. We want to make sure it's secure. Um, and I know, I know everybody's, everybody's really excited really about the exchange. Our, Our goal, goal is to have an exchange. We will have an exchange. exchange. But, but we want to make sure that it's secure, and we want to make sure that we're building it on proper technology. Um, there's nothing worse than, you know, hacking another, uh, you know, a tech product out there like you know, you know what, what, what happened with other exchanges. I'm not going to say names. I was about to say names, but I won't say other names and have something where there's, um, you know, risk and people losing, you know, their crypto assets. So I want to make sure I, I do. that we... Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. I, I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a fun point to, to kind of talk about after we get done. Sorry, keep going around. My oh, bad. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But we just want, yeah, we just want to make sure that that foundation set in place. Uh, but we are looking through it. We have had a pulse on it. And... We also also have have another another team team that will be doing that. So we have different teams working on different products. Uh, You know, we have a uh, a few other, I'd say say about about four other that that we're doing doing right now heavily. heavily. And then then as as we scale scale up teams, teams, we start start working on more products. 
So the exchange is one of those, but we want to make sure that we do it right. So we're not going to give any time frames yet. And I've told John this. I said, John is like the visionary, right? He wants to get it done. And I'm, and I'm more of the pragmatic approach. Like, this is how we do it right. This is how we build the tech. And if we want it done right for the community, this is the approach that we need to take. So right now, I'm kind of pumping the brakes. And John's like, well, let's, get, let's do it. Let's get it done. And we're trying to find that happy medium so that we can give you guys something great. So, yeah. yeah, no time frames no, yet, uh, but we yeah. will and, and we'll we'll kind of cover like time frames and an updated roadmap on the uh, on the next safety Sunday. You know, uh, Ryan and I go back and forth a lot about, hey man, why can't we get this done in a week? He's like, well, uh, because even if we put five hundred people on this on this thing, it's still not going to get done because it takes X amount of time to propagate a server. X- anyway, so him and I go back and forth all the time um, regarding that. Um, the the point I wanted to bring up was. Uh, and this is semi-related to your comment regarding the, the hack on one of the other exchanges. I don't think people realize how transparent blockchain technology is. And that, um, you know, if, if you're trying to hide on blockchain, it's probably one of the worst places to hide, in, in my personal opinion. Um, and so, you know, and, and this is something I talked about with, uh, with uh, some of the government officials I met with um, when I went to the Gambia, was regarding, like, the transparency of blockchain. Because a lot of people here in the crypto space have heard it's like, well, you know, uh, people uh, hide money in blockchain. I'm like, yeah, I, I can understand that people hide money everywhere, whether it's in your mattress, you know, whether you're hiding gold and you're digging it and putting it into your backyard, planting a tree on top of that. Or you've got a safety deposit box. People always try to hide money. But in my personal opinion, I think blockchain is the worst place to hide it uh, because it is. It is. It's truly a transparent system. You know, like what I would love to see is a government write a smart contract for the tax code. Because then, and then everyone using cryptocurrency, you know, whether it's a, a peg to the dollar, like or whatever currency, let's fiat coin. You know, we'll use that so nobody gets mad at us. Mad at us. But you know, you got fiat coin, and then. You know, when you buy something at uh, Waitrose or Walmart, depending on what side of the pond you're on, um, instantly that sales tax gets taken out, put through the smart contract. You know, 10% of that, whatever tax goes to the fire department, the other 10% goes to the health service, the other 10% goes to paying for the accountants. You know, it's uh, like people don't realize that blockchain implemented in the correct way is the most transparent way to you know, to, to have governance and everything. Anyway, I could go, I could probably speak for about five and a half hours, which, you know, I have done in the past with, uh, in the Gambia, but um, regarding like just what you can do with, with blockchain technology, but kind of bringing it back to, you know, the wallet and everything that we're doing and then the updated roadmap, we'll kind of cover the updated roadmap, uh, not kind of, we will cover the updated roadmap on the next Saving Sunday. Um, I just had one more question. Send it. Uh, I just want one other comment, Safe Moon Hound. You've been basically a breath of fresh air for this community. I just wanted to let you know that. And the other thing is any updates on B2. Thanks and have a great Sunday. Thank you, Evan. Um, B2, I think that would be yeah. more, of, uh, more of your. Yeah, I got it. Or, or pop up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. So, so V2. Uh, in all intents and purposes, imagine the safe contract with more uh, features. So, um, you know, I'll, so some of them is uh, so, okay. So one of the issues we've run into is pr- how do we protect our users? How do we protect the safe moon army? Um, because you do have a lot of exchanges that can boom automatically list um, your token via the use of a hot wallet. Um, now, Thomas is not here right now to correct me. Um, so if I say anything technically wrong, again, my subject matter expert is not here at this current point in time, but I know enough to be deadly when it comes to blockchain. So anyway, they use a hot wallet, they list us, and we have no control over over that listing process. And then a bunch of people move over to that exchange, and there's no either no phase one tokenomics, or they're not necessarily a reputable exchange. And so then we, we don't really have control over that. So one of the features we put in there is an automatic, how do I put it, uh, a one-way gateway where... Let's say someone did move over and all of their all their their safe moon or whatever, or um, they they're going to go try and move their safe moon over. It's essentially a, a gate that gets put up instantaneously when it comes to hot wallets, where it's blocked blocked off. Nobody can or blocked off. Nobody can you know uh, uh, can send their safe moon over to that hot wallet. Um, or it's a one way where people can withdraw, but they can't send over. So those who did send over before we were able to find the hot wallet, 
can then still exit and come back to the, the safe moon exchange. The other item we're looking at, and this is uh, something that we're in discussion, you know, um, is the ability to uh, send safe moon to people, you know, because right now, based on the research that we did and some of the metrics that we have, um, the nobody's really sending safe moon back and forth to each other. You know what I mean? Like you're not sending it to grandma because you're going to lose ten percent. And so, for math's sake, you've got ten, you've got a hundred people. Only ten of those people are sending safe moon to grandma to pay for groceries or whatever else. There's just still another ninety that haven't done it because the fee is too high. So we're looking at maybe a reduced fee. Now again, this is not uh, official yet. This is not something that we have. We're going to implement. We're still going to look over the metrics and the data and make a data-driven decision. Um, but like for example, for math's sake, two percent when you transfer to another wallet, or two percent when you transfer to grandma so she can pay for groceries. There's still tokenomics, and we still gain 90 other people now transferring, which increases the volume, increases the burn, increases other aspects of the tokenomics. And so that's one of the things we're looking at. The other thing that I just covered was essentially a, a, a feature to protect the safety holders when an exchange lists us without any kind of input from us, where while they, the people have already sent some tokens, they're able to withdraw it out of that exchange and not, necess, not pay a fee in that. So... Um, and there's also another aspect of it because we're always focused on the future. We, we want to build products that we can, that we can iterate upon. And so one of them is uh, essentially a, a fee-less migration feature. For example, let's say down the road, uh, something comes up or, or we want to upgrade and add more features that we can't currently do. Um, or there's a new technology or a blockchain that we're developing and migrating over to that blockchain. We want to be able to have a seamless process where a user can just transfer all their SafeMoon and migrate it to the SafeMoon blockchain or another blockchain, whatever. And so that's, that's some of the features that we're looking at implementing. Now, besides that, it's, it's pretty much the exact same SafeMoon that everyone's you know, uh, loved and have held. So there's no real difference except adding additional features on top. Um, and so that's kind of what V2 is right now, but again, and I've said this before in previous Safe Moon Sundays, it deserves its own moment, and we'll cover that in a future Safe Moon Sunday. And if I could add on to that too, John. Um, what's really exciting is how the V2 and how that will play into products that we're building in, in the ecosystem. So um, <laughs> that's what really gets really exciting. So everybody who's listening there, everything that we're doing um, is, a, is an approach of a phase, right? So first you have the token. Um, then we came out with the LP, the, our own liquidity pool. And then on that liquidity pool, we built our first product, right? We built our, well, I should say two products. We built this web swap and then we built the wallet. Now, if you really think about it, why are we doing it this way? And we're doing it this way because, well, whenever you want to start engaging in commerce with our other products, what are you going to have? What are you going to need to have in place first? You're, you're going to need to have a wallet. You're going to need to have some kind of connector that connects to all of our different products. So everything that we're doing, we have a nice phase approach, and it's very strategic in how we're rolling out these products. So this wallet is just one piece, and it's, the, it's an important piece to the next phase. And that next phase will be the next product. And how will that product affect the ecosystem, and how will the wallet connect to that product? Well, that could be another yeah. segment Sunday. That's another <laughs> safe moon Sunday. And, and again, you know, you, you brought it up. While, while we might be pretty much done with V2, and we're just basically looking at features and adding stuff on, and it's like 15 minutes worth of work every, every time we want to change a feature or works on something, um, we're not releasing that ahead of the wallet because we're doing this in a strategic manner to where it, our ecosystem is rolled out in the most efficient, smart way possible. So correct. Um, this is, there's a lot of stuff that moves in the back end um, yeah. with, with, uh, with safety. So I hope that answers your question, Evan. I know it was a, a very long answer. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All, right. All right. Uh, Rocky Man, how's it going? Bueller? Oh, I think he, he, your mic's off. Uh, yeah, I think he's muted right now. Um, there we go. 
Hey guys, sorry to, uh, I didn't even know why that pressed the mic, but I might as well ask, ask a question here. Um, can you hear me first? Yeah, we can hear you. Fantastic. Um, I know we don't probably want to speak anything on SafeMoon Dev, but the SafeMoon Deployer Wallet shows a trillion leaving. Will that be all that's leaving in the next little while? So uh, I can kind of uh, give a little bit of a history lesson um, real quick. So uh, SafeMoon Dev, um, this was a, so SafeMoon was a fair launch token. Uh, and SafeMoon Dev uh, purchased his tokens along with everyone else. Um, and, you know, he was what I would say technically is a founder. What SafeMoon was when he started it between day one and day five is not what we have built SafeMoon to be. Um, he hasn't necessarily, he hasn't been involved in the operational side um, since, I mean, late March, early April, to be, to be brutally honest. So, so um, I, that's why I tweeted because I, I haven't worked with them at all since we've been building building our team. So, no. you know, yeah, they're, they're nothing, nothing unaffected on our end, at least. So I'm not. I think I there's some fud, but I, I, I saw it as a complete non-issue because yeah. it just it doesn't affect anything moving forward for us, at least on our end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's internally the company. It's uh, as Thomas would put it, a nothing burger. Um, but in regards to your, probably your follow-up question is uh, regarding some of the FUD, I cannot comment on that FUD. So take that no, as look, it's, it's totally fine. I'm just an oddball question I had. Maybe I shouldn't have asked it. It's, I consider it over and done with. He's gone. Well, whatever. It's, we move on from there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we have... And we will. <laughs> and uh, thank you, too, for everything you're doing and striving every, every day to be better and better and better and just, just not listening to the white noise like a lot of us are. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we bleed safe moon um, every day. I wake up, I eat safe moon. You know, I go to lunch, I eat safe moon. Meeting, safe moon. Um, everything I do, like my social life is just safe moon. <laughs> You know, and, and Ryan's the same way. We're, you know, we're committed to the 2.5 million plus safe moon users and holders that we have. Um, and we'll continue to do so. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. The, you know, Ryan, and you, you and I both talk about this. The FUD was pretty, uh, was pretty spicy, as they would say. And that didn't phase us because we're like, okay, this is going to be over in about five minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think the FUD comes from, right, it comes from people who are really buying into, like, are they really working, or are they doing this, or, you know, and it's kind of this, it's kind of this stigma that you had later, earlier on, because there was this big push against SafeMoon, and anybody who's listening, I was, I had my own YouTube channel first before I even started with SafeMoon, I was a community member, I invested a lot in SafeMoon in the beginning, and I, mean, I, saw I saw what they were going through. through. I, saw I saw how data was being manipulated. I saw how FUD was being, you know, uh, basically, basically pushed out into the airways. airways. And, and it was, was like, like, wow, like, there's, there's a concerted, concerted effort here against a team, team who's actually meaning very, very well. well. And, and I, I, when I met John and we started, we started working, working, I come from a tech background. It was like clear as day. I saw exactly what was going on. I saw some of the holes. I saw, you know, we both, John and I both talked and we were like, there's some restructuring that needs to get done. And, and since, since that, that has happened, happened, I mean, where's, where's the, FUD the FUD now? now? You know, we, we have, have a product, product now that's number, number two on Google Play. Google Play. We have already just submitted our iOS. Our iOS. So, so once, once you have products out, out and once, and once we're building upon those products, products they, can't they can't really, really say, say much, much anymore. anymore. There's, There's nothing, nothing more you can say because we're, we're, we're pushing product for our users and we're going to continue to do that. But I understand how some people might think, you know, they have these preconceived notions of, well, they're not really doing it, but we are. And, we, and what we've, we've accomplished, accomplished so far, just, just with the wallet, wallet you know, has, has taken, taken other companies over a year to two years to do. So, and that's only one product. One product. It's one, a product. Product. <laughs> one product of the overall ecosystem. So, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get up. A... Yeah, it's going to disappear. It's, it's going to disappear. And it, it just, you know, for where we're at right now to see just in six months, you know, like, and the wallet, John, when I came in, Kind of in the mid, uh, in the tail end of the wallet, I, I guess the mid to tail end. But when did you actually start development on the wallet? 
I'm sure it wasn't the first month, right? No, no, no. no. So we we probably started Wallet. So architecture happened month three and a half. And then we started development month four and a half. Uh, and then we dealt with the things that I won't comment on, but that are public knowledge. Um, that put a slight hamper. But we were still able to get it done with... Uh, you know, I'll say this. Okay, we missed we missed the uh, we missed the deadline by two weeks. Okay, you yeah. know, <laughs> two weeks. I'm sorry. So, so, so anyone, listen, when when you hear FUD like this, like I think maybe coming from a product development standpoint, it's like I guess if you haven't built apps or you haven't built technology that has like launched or been acquired before, yeah, it's scary for a lot of people because they don't know if it can be done. But if you have the right people in the right place. They know, they know how to build, how to build tech. tech. They, they know, know how, how to make it successful. successful. You're, in You're in good hands. hands. You're, You're going to be, be fine. fine. And we're going to continue. continue. Like, like I said, I said two, two, I think it was what, two AMAs, AMAs before? I said, is yeah. this yeah. going to be a, a passing moment in time? People, People are going to laugh and they're going to say, oh, the Android. Remember, we were so scared the Android version wouldn't launch? Well, look. Yeah. It's a passing moment in time. Android version launched. Guess what the next one is? Next one is going to be iOS. And then guess what? We have more products for you guys. Oh yeah. oh yeah, iterate, and, 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 iterate, yeah, iterate, iterate. iterate. You know the thing. The thing is, about uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Go, go, go. My, my bad. I was just gonna say the thing about uh, you, uh, John, is you're the captain of the ship. You're doing your job every day. You're doing it phenomenally. You just go ahead, no matter what. And here's the problem with you, Ryan. We got you doing the wallet. We got you doing the tech. You're doing a phenomenal job. And it's like we need to clone you to be the FUD hound again because of all the crap going on daily with this lie after this lie. So it's like, yeah, we need you doing the tech, but we also need you defending our name, but you can't do both. You're doing the thing we need you to do. You're not doing the thing I want you to do because there's so much. I'm just going to say it. There's so much bullshit out there. It's ridiculous. And I'd argue. I'd, I'd, I'd argue. Oh, sorry. Sorry, right. Uh, no, go, 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 go. I'd argue that uh, he's still doing his job as the as the foot hound by getting the products released. Like, oh, Android doesn't exist. Laughs in 4.9, five stars over 100k downloads. Launch on September 13th. You know, number two on Google Play. Number two on Google Play. Laughs in number two on Google Play. Um, you know, it's it's we're the the easiest way to fight FUD is just to deliver. You know, um, and now that we have more structure in place now that we've implemented more items and you know now that we're in a, in a much better spot than where we were you know uh, before uh, things are inter and at least internally you know things with the company internally and company is great you know uh, I, I've probably interviewed 15 people right now for the roles that we need to fill uh, for the senior roles that we need to fill um, and you know Ryan you you have the craziness that you have on your team uh, over a product so um, but no, we have some great and amazing people coming on board. Um, and there's, there's just one person that I'm like itching to poach right now. And it's, it's take it, it's, they're, they're excited. It's, it's a, it's, we're in a really good spot, you know, okay. without thanks, like thanks. violating any gays. And, uh, I, I understand. Good spot. Uh, just don't say Matt Wallace or, uh, David Gokens. He's going to lose his mind. <laughs> thanks for the talk you too. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Ryan. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Damien. How are you doing today, Damien? You're good. Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, right on. Um, okay, so I was going to ask about the the timeline for the products down the road. We know we know the wallet is imminent, you know, and any day, you know, it could take a week. It's still, you know, we we're going to be around for that. The uh, exchange and blockchain. I'm not looking for specifics here, you know, like an actual date, but is it still around the ballpark that you guys originally set forth? Or is that tweet that I just saw kind of alluding to maybe a new refresh timeline for those products? Yeah, so I can speak from my end. Um, I am going to give a little bit of a different timeline. I want to I want to put correct information out there. And Ryan and I are just working on that. OK, so to give it to give a deadline or a, or a launch goal. But remember, a goal is something we're trying to hit. And because we involve our, you know, the community and the users in our development process a lot of the times, you know, maybe we give out too much information that we should. Regardless, though, you know, these are launch goals. Um, we're, there's going to be some revisions to that. Um, 
but Ryan and I still have to go through and finalize that because it's like, okay, all right, well, if there's, this is just for, for math's sake, if there's a week delay, if we hire five more devs, it'll, that week delay goes away. You know, that's the stuff that him and I are working on at a very, very nitty gritty level. So, um, it is I'll kind of bring it, yeah, it is revised, but we'll, uh, and it's, re it's revised partly due to a restructuring, but also because I'm also coming in with, a, like I, I told the, the last person, we're coming in with a pragmatic approach. And we're, and we're just going to do it right. I mean, 100%. And I think that everybody in the community is going to say, you know what? I would much rather have a quality exchange than a rushed exchange. And I, John, I, I sometimes I have to be the, I guess, the, the bad guy where I'm like, no, no, we, we got to hold a little bit. And this is because this is how we need to do it. And the, the, the thing I love about John is that he's such a good CEO. Like he listens to his people. He listens to the people he brings on. So you guys can blame me for, you know, saying, hey, we need to revise those timelines. But we're going to do it right. And we're going to revise them for a good reason. And, um, and it's, a, it's a give and take between me and Ryan. Ryan would be like, well, it's going to be this delay. I'm like, okay, well, what resources do you need to get it done by the timeline I want. And then you'll be like, okay, well, if I have these resources, we could get it done by then. And so with, with Ryan and I, and you know, the, the soon to be P of us uh, operations, you know, it's, it's this, uh, it's this give and take um, where I say, I want it done by this date. They say no. And then we compromise because we're able to find the resources and come to a solution. You know, it's not, I, I always listen to the people, you know, um, who are on the ground all the time because I, to be brutally honest, as a CEO, I handle all the strategic stuff and a lot of the business development items and et cetera. I can go down the list, but we'd be here for hours. Same thing with you, Ryan. If you went down, you know, went down the list of everything that you do every day, we'd be be here for hours. But it's a give and take, and I work with the team, you know, um, on these timelines. But again, I'm going to kind of bring it back to this point. We'll cover timelines, roadmap, and everything else on the next Safe and Sunday. Yeah, and I, I can appreciate that, quite honestly, you know, like hard dates, uh, I do appreciate, you know, the the attempt at that, but I can, I can only imagine how hard it is to develop anything, you know, in the crypto space. I don't know any of that stuff, and yeah, it blows my mind sometimes. The reason I was asking really is is the fudsters, you know, for for most yeah. of us, you know, we're we're fighting the fudsters left and right on Twitter all the time. I see Safe Moon Joe's in there, yeah, like yeah, it's like a constant thing, right? And and it's gonna be like that regardless. But with hard dates, boy, that gives them ammo. You know what I mean? It, it just it does. does. And and then it's like rough for a few days straight or weeks straight, and some powerhouses come around and it gets a little worse. So. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate, you know, not necessarily obscurity, but I like that. The goals, you know, having goals set forth rather than a straight update, then, yeah, I'm pretty sure we can rally around that a lot better, and it gives the Fusters a lot less ammo to come at us. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And, 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 you know, I'll speak to that. It's You look at some of the biggest companies, even Apple doesn't give a release date. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll give the release date of their product after it's already staged and ready to rock and roll. And, you know, the you know, way, the way that, that we approach this and, you know, we've know, had, had this conversation, conversation before is we're, we're just going to say, look, look, these are our milestones. milestones and, and once, once these milestones, milestones are hit, then we'll share a release date or share a soft, soft you know, launch date. date. Um, uh, uh, but we have to have milestones hit first. And we also yeah. have yeah. to remember that, you know, we're in a space in emerging tech. So there's, so there's a lot, a lot of unforeseen. unforeseen. We're working with new technology. And basically, and basically what emerging what tech, tech is, 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 is when, when I say, I say that, that, I mean that there's, there's very little documentation out there for developers and support. support. So, so sometimes, sometimes when you have to get something working, like we, do, we, we work with Swap, we have, we have such, such a rockstar rock dev team. team. They had they to go in and, and there's so little documentation out there just to get a function of the Swap working. They had to experiment on certain things and tweak it and get it just right. And there's a goes into, into that, that right? right and so, so people, people don't, don't maybe understand that but it's not your garden variety just app that you build it's emerging tech. tech so this so is so these, so these are the things, are things we want to account for and we just want to make sure that, that when you know, we are, are giving those dates uh or even time frames we want to make sure that we're giving you honest stuff because like you said the the community or not the community but the fudsters will jump on that because they'll say oh look they missed it well we're not going to give them ammo anymore 
We're going to show you guys progress. We're going to show you guys milestones, just like any other company does. And then we're going to launch accordingly. And that's how we're going to do it, because we're yeah. a legitimate company. And we have legitimate products in the pipeline. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, that sounds good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We're, Thank uh, you so much for the last Damien. Yeah, appreciate the question, Damien. Hey, John, uh, I got one right. quick question. All right. How, how many... How many applicants do you think if you have get rough number? How many decent applicants do you think you got for Safe Moon since you guys have listed for interviews and stuff like that? Let me uh, give me one second. I'll just open up. I'll just open up the email that's uh, correlating them. I would love to blow the fudsters out of the water with that one. Well, we have. We're still going through. Well, which I mean, department, you know? <laughs> yeah, on, on the product side, we have so many. And I'm talking to incredible, like, candidates. who Candidates who have taken other companies public. Like, who have taken, who have, who have basically been the point guards on taking some of your, I'm not going to say what products, but some of your favorite tech products public. And they're just like, we love SafeMoon. We want to be a part of this. Like, I'm, I'm already, just on my end, on product side, I'm interviewing a ton and it's hard to go through because there's so many great candidates and it's like you want to make sure that you pick the right ones but you want to pick the ones that have that passion you know and that want to and they'll stay up late like us and, and work because they're not they're not just showing up for a paycheck they're showing up to change the world in d5 yeah um that's so uh hundreds um in terms of the the stuff that i'm i'm currently handling outside of product um, and the other, and the other departments, department, hundreds. Um, in, terms uh, in terms of senior, senior leadership roles, um, I'm, I'm taking, taking a much, much more targeted, targeted approach um, when it comes down to it. You know, I'm, I'm looking for specific, very, very specific people um, that I have either A, worked with in the past, or I know of, or have come through, or who have come to me, or the, the knowledge of them have come to me through uh, advisors. Um, so, um, about hundreds, 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 and we, we go through hundreds of resumes. And then again, it's uh, for the, the smaller stuff, the product side, Ryan handles that, and he goes through I God knows how many. Um, and then from the, the other departments and everything um, who aren't represented right now here at this Safe Moon Sunday, uh, they have hundreds uh, on, on themselves just alone. So um, every, qualified people, and that's, that's kind, like, it's not an issue, but it's definitely, it'd be easy if it was like, okay, you have one person that shines above the rest, but you have everyone's amazing. Oh my god! So many qualified people. Yeah, and they and they so. fit well in products too. Like, yeah, I can. I mean, just off the top of my head, probably ten that fit perfectly with the different products that we haven't even announced yet that we're working on. That 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 personally, I feel would be a great fit uh, for specific roles with those products and help them. Um, grow. grow. So, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot. On uh, the, uh, the product side, I would say close to a thousand, probably. Um, yeah. Yeah. For, for, yeah. For yeah. everything yeah. I've, that I've looked at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, right cats. Let's, Let's go, go ahead and take, take questions, questions from, from your side, side of uh, things. things. Sure. sure. Um, the first, first one is that we mentioned about the wallets and sort of the version two or feature updates. Is there any sort of features you can name a list that would be an indication as to what we can expect for new features of just the wallet? Yeah, yeah. So we, I talked about, and I talked about this earlier uh, with the former question, was uh, uh, kind of a uh, ability to protect our users and our holders um, through a gateway system uh, when it comes to uh, exchanges listing us without reaching out. Um, I talked about the uh, the transferring between different wallets and how there'd be a tax-free system in place there. So for example, you know when you want to migrate to the Safeman blockchain, having something in place there where it's an easy migration back and forth. Um, and then I think I covered one other item, um, but those those are the items I'm, I, I want to I can release now and talk about. Uh, I think I missed the question. It was more in reliance to the update to the wallet, so the, the, the new UI and that sort of thing. What features can we expect from that? Well, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, amazing stuff. So, what we've done is basically we are setting up, we're going to be working with 
uh, the community. And just like we beta test the community, guess what? The community comes up with amazing ideas for what they want next. So when you launch tech products, you want to hear from your users, and your users should be the ones dictating what they want next. So we've been listening. We have a lot of people that we've been working with listening. Um, listening to our community. And then we also have things in the back end that we're working on that we'll need to have uh, in place so that we can start connecting all of the products and basically building the foundation with the wallet um, and how it connects with all of the other products that we have. So we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be working with basically the community and we're going to be talking about the different features. Some of them, one of the features is um, increased encryption, uh, we're going to be having a DApps, so the ability to actually connect with other apps. Um, and then we're going to be really beefing up uh, charts and a lot of other cool stuff. So right now, the foundation is built for the app. Now the fun part starts, where we start adding more features and we start optimizing. And we're going to start reaching out to the community for that and really listening to what our users want. And then also adding in uh, more support for other other communities, other tokens, other cryptocurrency projects. Um, so that's that's well underway and in the works right now. So yeah, a lot of a lot of good features for you know the proverbial version two of, of the safety wallet. So yes, awesome. Um, this one's kind of a two in one, um, but it's in relation to buy button specifically. First, is are we expecting to be able to buy direct safe moon? And if so, are they going to be more swap pairings with Swap by Safe Moon? I mean, the short answer is yes. We're working on that right now. Yep. yep. Short answer is working on it. <laughs> nice and easy. Um, let's jump more to a fun one, I suppose, in relation to marketing. Is a lot of people liked the cryptic die deceptive sort of working things out, bringing the community together through the forms of marketing. Can we expect more in the future for, is, is a way to tease products as such within marketing in that way, you know, the science and stuff? Yeah, 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 so we, we, yes. Short answer is yes. Um, I, I do want to take this this moment to uh, to basically clarify something. I, uh, Safe Moon Joe, I'm cool with you. Um, I, and I also appreciate that you found a little Easter egg uh, during your uh, your trip down the rabbit hole. So, <laughs> um, it's good. Anyway, yeah. Uh, well, I think that the the the, the cryptic stuff is is good in a sense to tease what we we're you know working on. Sometimes it's a it's that double edged sword, right? Because then it also some people might take it the wrong way. And then, and then they'll, they'll go, go down, down, you know, another you know, avenue or another, another rabbit hole. hole. Um, uh, but, but yeah, but definitely. Yeah, I, mean, definitely. I mean, it's fun and it's, and it's something, something that, that, you know, brings, brings the community together. together. And, and it also kind of keeps, keeps, it allows us to drip, drip the product or drip, drip the information, information out little, little by little so that, that you guys can kind of see the overall big vision of what we're working on. And like I say all the time, we can't always talk about all the products that we're working on behind the scenes. Be, we would we love, love to. to. I, would I would love, love to, to. Oh my gosh! Tell you all the, the, tell you the products that work on behind the scenes, but we can't because then it becomes. Well, when's, well, when's this going to be done? done? Well, when's that going to be done? done? So we so want to make sure, sure that we're when we're iterating, we're iterating, we're iterating and we're implementing what we, implementing what we have now and what we can produce, and, and the results that we can produce for the community and for everybody, and then we're staying true to the plan and the vision, and we're doing that to a T. So the wallet is now. The wallet, the wallet is great. great. The, wallet the wallet is something, something that we're going to be building onto. onto. And then and after, after wallet, wallet, it's going to be other, other things. things. So, so, and then, and then John, John might, might, you know, decide, hey, you know what? I think it's the time, time to start talking, talking about, about this. this. And that's, that's his lead. So, yep. 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 A lot of, a lot of, lot of good stuff. stuff. A lot of good team synergy now that we've done a lot of the restructuring. So we're really excited for what we have currently in development and what we're planning to develop here for you know the future so awesome now talking of completion of the ecosystem currently in terms of lp and the bigger provider which is currently on pancake swap is it at completion or at a certain point in the, within the timeline is that lp going to be moved to safe moon swap to become the main source or is that just going to now start to dwindle and we start to push safe moon swap as a whole? 
So as, as a company, yes, we, we want uh, Safe Moon Swap to be everyone's main. Um, and so, you know, for those of you, I would say, who've been with Safe Moon for a while, you remember the whole V1, V2 pancake swap thing? Well, now we've got a V2 to Safe Moon Swap pancake thing. So um, we're currently migrating LP over there. Um, and that's our focus is Safe Moon Swap because that's going to be uh, part of the Safe Moon ecosystem. So. Awesome. Um, this is mainly more for Ryan, going back to the sort of features. Will the swap feature have an integrated P token swap uh, to be able to go across chains within the app instead of having to go with the, to the third party like P tokens to, to move across? So we're, we're yeah. current. Do you mind? Okay. I, I got this one. I got this one. Um, yeah, so we're right now look, uh, working towards. With V2, um, you know, uh, uh, different bridges, bridge options. Um, you know, we, we are a cross-chain token right now, and we will continue to be so. We, you know, one of the things we focus on is accessibility and quality, um, but accessibility is a major point, and that, you know, that I stress with Ryan all the time, that he talks with me about all the time. It's like, okay, how does this, how does this benefit accessibility? You know, because there's, there's kind of three pillars we look at, security, accessibility, and quality. Well, when it comes to uh, bridges, it's accessibility. So uh, Ryan and I are currently working on that, um, as well as other team members, um, specifically not only with V2, but our current um, V1 uh, safety. So um, in terms of support for the P tokens thing, that's something that Ryan and I will cover on a uh, future safety Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, I think the only other big one really is, it's kind of been left in the dark a little bit, but is Operation Phoenix is coming and we'd love to know more about it, but there's obviously things you can't say, but you can say, how do you feel about it being world changing? Hmm, hmm, mm. this is something that, uh, I mean, Ryan knows the full story, but uh, it's something that we all, it's kind of our, I would say our North Star, you know, if you're a, if you're a sailor, if you're uh, into, into into astronomy, but um, it's it's a guiding point for us. You know, products in the ecosystem guides towards the full launch of uh, Operation Phoenix. Now, in regards to progress, um, I can't give a whole lot of details because it is a lot of it is covered by NDA. Um, but what I can say is wind turbines, and I'll leave it there. Yeah, it's a it's a big. It's a very, like, like Apple, Apple doesn't, doesn't come out and say, okay, okay well, we're, we're going to, you know, know, with this phone, we're going to come out and we're going to create, create, you know, an entire ecosystem and the app store and this and that. They first start with their phone, right? They start with a yeah. yeah. small product. And, and then they, they grow, grow and build upon that. that. So, so I think, I think that, that the vision that John has with that is incredible. And, but it's like, you have to build the framework first. And it just always goes back to John and I. It's like, I think that we're such a good team because... I'm, I'm always, always like, like no, no pragmatic. pragmatic. Like, how, how do we do, do it? it? Like, like how, how do we get it done? done? And what, what, what are the time frames? Uh, you, know, you know, what are what the resources? resources? What's, what's involved? And what's, what's our approach? And like, how, how do we build, build upon, upon it? it? And then, and then John, John says, says, well, that's, well, that's easy. easy. We, we have, have these resources. resources. I can bring this together. He's like the chef in the kitchen brings it all together. And then I'm the one with the nuts and the bolts and the smaller stuff. Like, okay, well, if we get there, then this is these are the things that we need to knock out first. And yeah, and you know, it's approach. Sorry, 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 sorry to cut you off, but uh, it's it's a it's a good relationship where it's like okay, um, he's in the nitty gritty, he's building it, so I have time to actually be the chef, you know, be like, all right, well we need carrots over here, we need tomatoes over here, and then I'm like, Brian, what do you need? I I need tomatoes and carrots because this is how much I need to get this uh, this soup done. I'm like, all right, here's the here's the carrots and the tomatoes I have right now. Now you have the resources you need to meet what I want. Uh, in terms of in terms of the timeline, and so it's it's a give and take relationship, and it's 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 fantastic. Um, but it looks like we have three new speakers. Ryan, uh, we'll start with Jason. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, excellent. Thank you for asking, uh, gentlemen. Uh, just want to say, uh, just great job on destroying the FUD. Appreciate it. Um, I had to step away, so if you guys already answered this, I apologize. But I was hoping you could give us something where we could help uh, destroy more FUD regarding the swap and liquefy. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, we covered this uh, in the last uh, Safe Mean Sunday. Okay. Um, and Thomas, he's our uh, he's kind of the subject matter expert. He'd be better the better individual to uh, answer this question because it is a very technical question. So much appreciated. Thank you, Phil. Yep. Uh, if Jason, if you have nothing else, uh, I'll go to Mick. Mick, how are you doing today? Hey, what's going on, man? You guys hear me all right? I can hear you. Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, so two questions. Uh, one, you kind of hit it uh, when you're talking about going from V1 to V2, but when uh, you guys eventually go to a coin, will the user have to do something to go from token to coin, and will the people that have left the project uh, that have dust in their accounts, will they get left behind so the supply will essentially be lower initially? So, so that will deserve its own moment. Um, however, the the goal for us is, you know, it comes back to accessibility. If it can be a seamless process where, let's, you know, you got the safety wallet and you hit a button and it migrates, that's what we're shooting for where it's essentially one click and you're done for the user, on the user side of things. Um, accessibility is something we focus heavily on. Um, so. Uh, in regards to the other the other points that you you brought up, uh, we will answer those in a future Safe Moon Sunday, as the Safe Moon blockchain deserves its own moment. Right, I, I can respect that. And then the the second question I had uh, regarding the wallet. Um, so on your guys' website, on the wallet tracker, you're able to see the reflections you gained over your lifetime. Is there any? Uh, plan to implement that into the wallet like a a 24-hour period of reflections a lifetime uh, reflections um just being able to see how much you've invested into your your safe moon how much you've actually earned average per token kind of like seeing seeing your numbers move up and down like throughout the lifetime of your investment yeah yeah so i've i've gotten that a lot <laughs> we have had that a lot in uh, we're already looking into that and how we can display that. Um, it becomes a little, it becomes something where, where if you, so when you connect to the blockchain, you're using um, technologies like Web3.js. And so there's certain things and certain uh, events that you can track uh, when it comes to reflection or when it comes to you know, uh, calls or uh, anything that happens basically on the blockchain. So we're, so we're trying, trying to find a way in a creative way that we can show those reflections back to the user. And we're thinking of things like, oh, maybe we do a snapshot of the wallet within the app. And then uh, that snapshot, maybe when you imported your wallet, you had, you know, say 10 billion, 500 million safe moon. It does a snapshot and then it's able to then track from that 10 billion, 500 million and, you know, then save it as your initial import value and then over time you would be able to see those reflections things like that um, that we're looking into there's also subgraphs um, that we're looking into but the great thing about what we're doing i think with our lp pool is that we're building subgraphs too this is something i don't think that we've even discussed and this is happening on behind the scenes is we're building subgraphs with our lp pool so we can track all of the volume, all of the fees, we can track everything per product line. Because if you're a legitimate company, then what do you need to do? You need to be able to track how much volume you're getting on each product. You need to be able to track uh, you know, how many fees you're making per product line. Because if you have a product line that you're pushing and it's not doing well and people don't use it and like it, then you need to be able to track it. So we're doing that and that will probably help with your feature that you're talking about with how we can uh, somehow be creative in tracking the reflections for the users. But this is definitely something we have a pulse on, um, definitely something we've heard from the community as a, as a big feature ad. And then when, once we find a feasible route and a feasible way to do it that makes sense, um, then we'll implement it 100%. Now, cool. Ryan, yeah, I didn't kind of go over... Oh, sorry. Let me cut you off. Oh, no, no, I was just saying, I, I thought that was a cool feature. I didn't even know your, uh, your website had that and... I saw my reflections and I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I saw someone say, like, we need a sell reflections button. I'm like, I'm like, that's that's a cool idea, you know? Yeah. 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 Feedback yeah, is noted. Get on Twitter, we've gotten a lot. So definitely something we have a pulse on. And one of the, that's actually, I would say, one of the higher features um, that's up there that people want, that people have been asking for. 
So, yep. yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your questions, questions Mick. Now we're on to uh, Safe, Safe Moon Pup. Pup. Uh, Rob, next speaker. All right. Well, um, you're muted, but we'll uh, cats. We'll uh, pass it off over to you for some follow-on questions. Wait, the other stuff. wait. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, yep, I can hear you now. Hey, how's it oh, going? Oh, sorry. Uh, I just had a question with uh, the V2. I know you said you were going to do a lot of stuff in the future to talk about it, but um, as far as going to V1 to V2, is the plan to have it just like a simple, just like it's going to be like seamless, but we won't have to do anything? Or are we going to have to like send it to uh, like a wallet and then it will send back V2 tokens or something? So we're, we're focused, again, you know, I've covered this on other, other questions as well, accessibility and ease of use, you know, and ease of use falls into accessibility. Um, ideally, you know, and Brian and I are currently working through that process right now. Again, we had to get the wallet out first, um, but with the Safemoon wallet, uh, we have the ability to make that process of migrating over to V2 a lot quicker, easier, and simpler. So, yes. The plan is always to make it a one-click, a one-press, a one-tap process. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. No problem. All right. Cats, we'll pass it off over to you. Sure. So the last one is kind of more aimed at the blockchain uh, in terms of the process. And it's maybe more aimed at Ryan with the blockchain is... When you're launching the blockchain and looking to go forward with it, how are you looking to do that? Are you launching with just the testnet or is it then testnet to mainnet or are you going to try and do both? Obviously, you want to obviously test it and make sure everything's right with the future of the whole entire project. But what's, what's your sort of concept behind moving forward with the blockchain specifically? So so I can feel this, this, uh, this answer and this question. Uh, so... And Ryan, feel free to, to feed in any additional input. But uh, we will always do a beta, so a testnet, before we do a mainnet, always. Um, and so. things get a little finicky on testnet. So testnet, obviously, where we always test all of our products. We have uh, you know, all of our environment documentation set up. So all of the future products, not just Wallet, but all of the future products will be tested on testnet first. The problem with testnet is once you start getting into mainnet, then you start dealing with gas and you start dealing with like real world mechanisms that you're going to be using. So testnet to mainnet, like we've learned with, you know, migrating over is they're two different animals. It's not as easy as just flipping this. So all of the future products that we have, we will be testing on testnet, but then we're also going to have betas, just like we did with our, our wallets. We're going to have betas as well. We're going to have bringing community members to help with that. I don't know. What are they so wanting for? That'll be a fun, um, you know, kind of a fun thing that we do for our launches. And it's obviously going to help. That's kind of going to be our, that's going to be our model, right? Because we're all a community. We're all, you know, wanting to see the, the success of the product. So we bring in everybody to help with that. And, and it went, it went so, so well with the wallet. wallet. We're like, like, why don't we do that with other products? products. So, that's so that's how we're going to do it. And then by doing that, we'll also mitigate a lot of issues that we'll have releasing a product to, you know, millions of people because we'll have people who are volunteers and know, okay, well, this is a main net product. It's in beta. There's some risks involved, um, but they're willing to volunteer and be a part of that. And that's what we've been able to do with Safe and Walt. So we'll be doing that with the others as well. Yeah. And so... You know, it's we always want to involve the community with this development process as we do get amazing feedback and everyone's always willing to give that feedback, whether it's uh, perceived as good, whether it's perceived as bad, 
feedback for me is it's feedback, honest. and it makes us <laughs> and it's honest. You know, it's it's honest feedback is the best thing, whether it's negative or positive. Um, that feedback allows us to a move quicker. It allows us to build a better product that's both more safe, more accessible, and of quality. And so we're always we're always focused on that. Um, so real quick, uh, we've kind of hit our end for this Safety Sunday. So we will field one more question, Cats. Um, let's have a quick see. There's quite a few with you, but I'm going to try and save those for the next Safe Moon Sunday, as you've mentioned. No worries. Okay, so NFTs. Now, people have said that the disappearance of an NFT button on the Android side, is it still something that is going to happen? And is the blockchain going to assist with minting and also then selling and so forth? So NFTs is, uh, is something that Apple, the Apple App Store is a little bit finicky on when it comes to approving an app. And so we took the NFT tab out of uh, the iOS app for now. Um, as support and as uh, buy-in from you know Apple and, and, and their providers uh, grows, we'll be able to implement the, uh, the NFT stuff further. Um, yes, we plan to have NFTs in our ecosystem because it's not only because you know like having a NFT art you know supported, it's also the other aspects in regards to Operation Phoenix. You know I, Thomas and I probably talk, 30, 45 minutes where we talk about the possibilities and what you can actually do with NFTs. Um, but again, I'll, I'll say that for a future Safe Moon Sunday or the Safe Moon podcast where him and I just talk about NFTs for 45 minutes. Um, but yes, we, we, we will support NFTs. It's purely dependent on uh, Google Play and the App Store. And Ryan, if you want to kind of go into that a little bit, I believe Coinbase and other uh, wallet providers are dealing with this as well right now. Yeah, yeah. So we want to make sure that when we're launching products, we're launching them uniformly, right? So just like we launched Android, we have the same features in Android as we have in Apple. We're not going to, you know, have, let Android have all of these other features and then Apple have none or vice versa. So we want to make sure that everything we're launching is uniform. We're going to make sure that we plan it correctly. So the NFTs, we found out right very quick whenever we launched or we submitted uh, Apple the first time, we found out that Apple rejected it because it had an NFT tab. So we went back to the drawing board and said, okay, so how are we going to do this? If we're going to do NFTs, we have to commit to it. We have to make sure that we build up the features properly and we make sure that we do it right. So right now, as it stands, our initial projections of having the NFT as a tab, we wouldn't be able to do it right. So we've removed that tab. We no longer have NFTs right now as it stands and we're going back to the drawing board and thinking okay how can we circumvent this and how can we launch it right so that's where we're at and right now we have a lot of i think i said this last ama we're thinking of other ways we can have uh, nfts and that's through resp responsive web um you know browsers other things where you're still able to access or through dApps and other avenues so there's a lot of different things that we're we're thinking about and how we approach this, but I mean, there's, could you imagine us trying to launch with an NFT and then submitting that to Apple and then two weeks later get a rejection and say, oh, well, you know, you, you still can't do NFTs because um, of X, Y, Z. So we're doing everything right. And then once we get a nice solid foundational plan, we'll move forward with that. But right now we're just focused on getting the MVP out getting the right app out, getting the right features out, and then we can always build upon that. But NFTs is definitely. Yeah, iterate, iterate, iterate. Perfection is a journey, not a destination. All right, so that kind of concludes our Safe Moon Sunday. You know, I want to thank Ryan and Katz R Us for, uh, for being on today, and as well as the other speakers and people who ask questions. Um, kind of go over uh, some final points. Android Wallet is launched. It is live. It's on the Google Play Store. Um, we have 20,000 plus reviews. We're between 4.9 and 5 stars. We're receiving about 20,000 downloads today, or per day. We have over 100,000 downloads since the 13th of September. Um, iOS is submitted. So launch for that is imminent. Uh, stay tuned. 
And then the next Safe Moon Sunday will be on Sunday, the 3rd of October. Uh, final times to be released soon. So, all right, Ryan, thank you. Appreciate everything uh, you, you do here at Safe Moon and uh, also hopping on and staying up late to, uh, to, to talk to the community. Cats are us. Thank you for, uh, for joining. Uh, I'm John. I'm the CEO of Safe Moon. I'm Ryan, the global head of products at Safe and I'm Katz, senior educator for Safe Moon. Thanks for We are Safe Moon. We are family. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Bye bye.